All righty. I am pleased to be joined by the two hosts of the Touch Gloves Boxing Podcast, BNG and Trey. How's it going, guys? Oh, good. Oh, good. All right. Again, thanks for coming on a kind of a late notice. Um, but of course, the big fight happened on Saturday between JR, I guess Sunday night, sorry, between Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley. But before we get talking about that, if you guys want to talk more about your podcast, all that good stuff. Yeah, Trey, when you're ready. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, um, we have a new show. It's called uh, Touch Gloves Boxing. Um, it's obviously powered by Never Foul, who they've obviously been able to grow their platform. Uh, through the sort of football so- slash uh, soccer community. And um, we've obviously come in and we're here to change the game. And um, my my good cousin here, uh, BNG, is obviously going to be the energy. And um, my personal title for him is uh, sports entertainment. But he's obviously got more to say about himself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So again, yeah, thanks for guys for coming on. It's um, definitely, um, it was, when I saw your guys' podcast, I had to check you out. And of course you guys are a boxing podcast and, you know, I haven't talked to a whole lot of boxing podcasts. It's more been a lot more UFC and MMA, but not really boxing necessarily. But uh, let's talk about the uh, Jake Paul and Tyra Woodley fight. I personally was hoping Woodley would win and he almost had that win technically almost got the knockout in the fourth round, but that was about it. What did you guys just think about the fight in general? Yeah, right. just, oh, you you want me to do it? All right, no worries. You know what? If I'm completely honest with you, in terms of uh, sort of the boxing culture, uh, the boxing history, of course, um, you obviously wanted uh, Woodley to, to win the fight. But for me, Jake Paul, um, as much as you might not like the antics of the ring, in the ring, he obviously did the job. And for me, he got the decision. And look... When I was watching it live, I felt it was close. But when I watched it again, I just felt that uh, Woodley didn't do enough in terms of uh, applying the pressure to, um, you know, convince the judges to get the results. So even though he had a good fourth round when he nearly knocked down uh, Jake Paul, for me, it still wasn't enough uh, for him to obviously get the decision because I felt that Jake Paul ended up going up a level on the seventh round onwards to uh, reclaim the victory, in my opinion. Yeah, I, see, with me, I feel that um, Jake Paul wouldn't want to rematch Woodley because I feel that Woodley's been inactive for like is it over two years. I feel that it was a close fight, but I, personally, watching it again, I think it should have been a draw because I feel that um, Woodley was applying more pressure and Jake Paul was, you know, he was... He was, how can I put it? He was running more. He was, Woodley was more active where Jake wasn't as active as Woodley. And I feel that that shot, I think it was the right hook he got. That should have been counted as a knockdown. But again, because it's his hometown, you know, pay-per-view, they have to give it to him. Yeah, what I took away from the fight was uh, Tyron Woodley looked good for his first fight, to be honest with you. To go from the from MMA to boxing is just a completely different sport. Even though it's similar, it's not the same. Um, and he actually, I thought threw better punches and harder ones, but the thing was Jake Paul had more punches technically. And I think that was a huge advantage of, and of course the judges were probably a little on Jake Paul's side because it was hosted by Jake Paul, which is one thing as the one downside about boxing in my opinion. But I think again, Jake Paul is a better fighter than we give him credit for. I just think if he actually fought a real boxer, it would be different like a Tommy Fury, which we were talking about earlier before we started recording. Uh, but speaking of Tommy Fury, do you think he'll actually fight Tommy Fury in his next fight? He, Jake Paul is a novice. Like, he needs more and more fights before he fights the likes of Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury is a professional boxer. He comes from a boxing background. Jake, you know, is a YouTuber. And he's learning, you know, he's learning. But I feel that if he was to go in the ring right now, the likes of Tommy Fury or anybody else in the professional boxing, game over. Let I me mean, put it this way, everybody who's fighting, they're either an MMA fighter or YouTuber, somebody that he knows he's got an advantage over. There's no way Jake is going to fight the likes of Canelo. Well, not now anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, nah, he, he's, he's not going to fight Tommy Shrew. If he does, then, boy. But, nah, I, I can't see that happening. Not yet. Yeah, you know what? Um, I agree with you. Um, I can't see it happening. Um, but, 
the reason why I can't personally see it happening is not even based on the whole situation of uh, Jake Paul being a novice and with obviously Tyson, um, Tommy Fury being the, the, the pro boxer who's obviously had more experience. I just felt that uh, Tommy Fury needed to, you know, have an explosive win, maybe a, a knockout to really cause uh, a bit of a stir for the media to, you know, build up this match between both fighters because Tommy Fury ultimately should have gone to uh, the States, got the job, uh, job done like um, Daniel Dubois and, uh, you know, put more of a statement out there for him to warrant a fight against Jake Paul because at the end of the day, for me, um, as much as you, you might not like his sort of character, but for me, he's uh, done the job to be a, uh, you know, a prize fighter in this division. And uh, he's obviously done a fantastic job to uh, maintain that statement of being uh, that YouTuber who's uh, changing the world. I feel that Tommy Fury, when he fought Anthony Taylor, I think it was just a warm up for him, you know. I think maybe it was just a game plan just to make Jake Paul think, ah, oh, yeah, Tommy Fury is probably easy. Because bear in mind, Tommy Fury has only had, what, is this his fifth fight, right? Professional fight? Sixth, sixth, I Six. believe. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think it was part of the game plan. But he got the win. So um, if anything, Jake Paul should think, yeah, I can fight Tommy. I've got confidence now. I, I, let, let me fight. But his management team will advise him, don't do it, Jake. Uh, if anything, fight the likes of maybe Conor McGregor. Yeah, I've heard about that, Ruben. I just don't know if McGregor necessarily wants to fight Jake Paul, even though I think it would be definitely a big spectacle and it would definitely give a huge payday for both fighters. And now I think McGregor was listed as the number one, as the, um, I think he's the richest athlete according to Forbes or something like that. So I guess it's not yeah. necessarily a desperate move by him, but I think he is a free agent from the UFC, I think at the end of the year, I believe. So that's a thing to kind of look out for, I believe. I'm not necessarily, and I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure he's a free agent. But again, we'll see what happens there. I do think he wants to fight Poirier one more time and hold the belt at least one more time. But we'll see what ends up happening there. But um, again, and there was a few things I took away from the fight, but I don't know, the fight kind of was similar. And this is kind of a shot in the dark. And I know it's a little crazy to mention, but if you remember when Pacquiao and Mayweather fought back, I think it was in 2015, yeah. 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 When I saw the fight, I thought Pacquiao had more had more powerful punches, but he didn't throw as many as Mayweather did. And I kind of yeah. felt like that was the fight between Mayweather and or not Mayweather between Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley. Paul yeah. had more punches, but Woodley technically had more powerful punches. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did you guys kind of think did you kind of have a similar feel to that fight back in 2015? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, I just, I, f I felt that that fight could have either gone every way, um, either way. But um, honestly, I got that same vibe. I I'm not gonna lie. Um, BNJ, what do you think? Um, I honestly, I think the fight was overhyped. What well, they had to just sell tickets, but it could have been. I was expecting to see a knockout. Mm. A knockout. That's what I was expecting to see. Same explosive, like boom. You know, but who yeah. knows? There's a possibility that they may do it again. There's a slim chance, but I, I, I highly doubt it. Yeah, I would love to see that, to be honest with you. I think Woodley wants to, but I think Woodley might need to have one more fight, professional boxing fight with another person before he fights Jake Paul again, just so he has the experience. Because you kind of saw that he, there was a little lack of experience yeah. with Woodley. But I mean, okay, did you have anything else to add there, Trey? No, no, no. I was... Okay. I'm, I'm with exactly what you're saying you're, you're absolutely spot on okay yeah it just it it was interesting to see though because Woodley is a better fight is a better it would had a pretty good showing what he showed on Sunday night it just I think the lack mm. of experience you definitely saw that in round four when he didn't take advantage when Jake Paul was in the ropes but I don't know I think both fighters are better than we like to give them credit for but yeah. I don't know we'll end up seeing um and there's another matchup, too, that I think could be interesting. Uh, or actually, who do you think would be the next best matchup for Jake Paul? I, I, I think Jake Paul and... Uh, I, okay, Jake Paul, KSI, or Jake Paul and Conor McGregor? Those two. For me, because he's obviously fought his brother... His brother has to try and get revenge. So is KSI for me. I, I, I want to see that fight. I want to see KSI get back to camp, 
you know, just get away from the music, get into camp and, you know, get in that fight with uh, Jake Paul. I definitely feel we'll do numbers, especially in the UK. And um, it's YouTubers, two YouTubers battling out for, for that title. So I think they should make some sort of legitimate championship on the line as well, just to make it a bit Ooh. juicy. The, <laughs> the undisputed YouTuber, just something that would just bring a little twist uh, in the fight. So uh, KSI would be the, the main opponent for me. What do you think? Um, I think that would be interesting. And again, I was talking to my, that, uh, that same friend that I was talking to is actually a podcaster I was talking to as well, but he actually mentioned that KSI could be the next opponent. I think he also talked about Kamara Usman being maybe a matchup. I know Usman and, uh, Paul were talking back. I think it was either May or June. They really, uh, that they were kind of talking smack to each other, but Usman would be interesting, but KSI, I don't really think much about KSI because again, he fought with Logan Paul twice and he won and then he had a, they had a draw the next time they fought. Um, that would be interesting. And I don't know what you said, mentioned they should make a belt like the YouTube. I don't know. What weight class would that be? Would that be? <laughs> cruiserweight, wasn't it? Cruiserweight. Cruiserweight. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe yeah, it's cruiserweight. cruiserweight, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it's Cruiserweight. Um, but the, the only thing is, so it's right, oh, as well. KSI has been inactive. So I thought that um, uh, Paul will have more advantage at the moment. So I don't think that should happen right. That shouldn't have quite happened next. I, should, I think that fight should happen later on next year. Yeah, I, th I think you're right as well. And it's good. I just I just kind of want to see Jake Paul get humbled. I understand he's a decent fighter, but <laughs> I just get so annoyed with his, you know, antics, you know, off and on and off the ring. It just it gets a little annoying, but he is a better again. He is a better professional fighter than we give him credit for. It's just yeah. if he actually fought a real boxer, then we'd see how good of a fighter he really is and just. It doesn't seem like he's going to fight someone his own size for a while until he gets up to speed or whatever. But I th eventually, I think he will be humbled. We'll just, I don't know what fighter that's going to be. So, I mean. He could potentially fight his brother. Yeah. Logan Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Would I did get. Hit... Oh, sorry. You can continue with that. Yeah. I was just going to ask, would you, would you get in the ring with your bro? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> guys, that. that... That question is directed for both of you. Would you get in the ring with your brother? Nah, nah, nah I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Nah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I, like I said, I did hear something about the Jake Paul and Logan Paul fight, but it doesn't seem Log like as like it doesn't seem Logan Paul as is as dedicated to boxing as much as Jake Paul, which is interesting because yeah. Logan Paul was the one that started this when he fought KSI the first time, and all of a yep. sudden he's fought what two or three times. I guess the Mayweather fight didn't matter. That was kind of a Whoa, waste of money. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I thought that, you know, again, Jake Paul or Logan Paul doesn't seem as motivated boxing as much as Jake Paul does. And I think it's more of a Jake Paul thing. I don't think yeah. they'd fight either. I think there's too much of a, you know, there's just too much of a friendship, I guess I would say, between mm. the two. I don't necessarily think there's something that they really want to go against each other. But I think it would definitely, definitely sell some pay per views. That's for sure. Um, but who do you actually, if Logan Paul gets back into the ring, who do you think would be his next opponent? Ooh, that is a, mm. that's a, that's an interesting one, you know, Logan Paul. So I believe he fought as a heavyweight, right? I believe the, so, yeah. the amen. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the person I remember him calling now, um, not so much calling out. He was just um, being disrespectful to um, a rapper called, I think it's called, is it Little Baby or The Baby? One of them. But um, I can't really see, I don't know, I can't really see him fighting anyone in professional boxing. If anything, I could probably see him fighting someone in the WWE. Yeah. Yeah. Probably get into that field, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think what Logan Paul was at, was at the SummerSlam or what was he at? He was at somewhere... Was it back in the spring he was doing something with the WWE? I can't quite remember, yeah. but yeah. he did something yeah. of that. And I like I don't know. I didn't hear much about the between him and the rapper Little Baby, but I mean I guess that would be interesting. I just I think I think Logan Paul, I think he wants to fight another boxer. I just don't know if he's quite as motivated as much as Jake is. I mean, do you have anything yeah. else you want to add there? If anything, I think Logan Paul, he should fight the likes of Mike Tyson exhibition fight. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? I think, I think Mike, Mike's what? what 55, 56? I think Mike will humble him. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I would. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, I don't think there's. I think I don't think that. I think there's definitely a rivalry between the two. I mean, but I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I mean, Logan Paul would probably fight, do it because he's what in his fifties, and Logan Paul's a lot younger. Or not? Yeah, Logan Paul's a lot younger, and he fought Floyd Mayweather, but. I'll I'll be honest with you. That fight was just a setup. I mean, that wasn't real yeah, an actual course. fight. Yeah. So because I remember a lot of people saying, "Oh, Floyd done bad." I'm like, "No, put it this way: if it was a non-exhibition fight and it was a real fight, I guarantee you Floyd would have probably knocked him out because every round Logan was struggling. He was going to his corner. He was out of breath. He was gassed out. So Floyd Floyd had been said it. I look, I got paid 100 mil. Easy money. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> that was a robbery. That was a robbery. Daylight robbery, essentially. Daylight. Because Mayweather just wanted to demonstrate his boxing skills against a heavier man. And, um, yeah, he's just having fun. And I think the way Mayweather explained it in the press yeah. conference was just spot on. He said, mm -hmm. there's one guy that's motivated. He's doing boxing um, sparring sessions. He's training every day. I'm flying to Dubai, I'm flying to all different countries and I get this opportunity, of course he's going to go and take it. And um, Do you know what? Over. I would like to see Jake Paul and Floyd Mayweather, non-exhibition fight, 12 round. That's a fight I would like to see. Because I feel that Floyd felt disrespected by Jake Paul and I feel that Jake Paul, he reckons that his brother Logan be Floyd, who he did it was an exhibition, but that would be an excellent fight. That would do numbers. Definitely yeah. do numbers. Showtime pay-per-view. Yeah, I think any type of... Oh, sorry. Did you have anything else to add to that, Troy? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's my bad. But I think any type of fight between Paul and Mayweather, they're going to have... Big, they're going to draw a big pay-per-view. But I think... And you, if we had gone back, what, five or ten years and... Jake Paul or not Jake Paul, Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather were actually done about 10 years ago or even five years ago. Floyd Mayweather probably would have knocked him out or at least won it easily. And I think there might have been something in the contract that said no knockout. I had a feeling about something like that. And yeah, Logan Paul was like Logan Paul seemed like he was really tired after every round. You mentioned it like he was very tired after every round. You could tell after the fight, he was just exhausted. Yeah, I gas. think he was. I think he was kind of stunned a little bit, even though he's probably in the contract that he was still able to survive. But mm -hmm. again, it, it, I think just if you had been even five years ago, Floyd Mayweather probably would have easily convinced people that he would have won that. I don't know if it would have been a knockout, but I think it would have been close to one. But oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. and then again, as you mentioned, Logan or Jake Paul versus Floyd Mayweather, that'd be interesting. I just think that I would want that to actually be a fight, not an exhibition. Yeah. However, yeah. I think that would probably, that would probably actually work if, you know, because I think, again, Logan Paul is more serious. And I think he would, or not Logan Paul, Jake Paul, excuse me, I keep on getting mixed up. But <laughs> I think, I think he would much rather have a real fight than an exhibition, but it would be interesting. I just want to see Jake Paul fight someone his size and an actual real boxer, but mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll end up seeing what happens. Um, let's, let's stay in the boxing universe. You know, the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight's going to finally happen in October. I'm pretty excited. I was a little disappointed it didn't happen. And of course, the winner yeah. will probably what fight Anthony Joshua for the mm -hmm. you know, undisputed belt. But what do you guys think about that fight? And who do you think has the advantage? Hey, do you know what? I'm going to say it's 50 50 because anything can happen. Because look, Fury is a good boxer. Wilder, is he's got that one punch power. Wilder has said, you know, you could be. Great for the whole 12 run. I just need a second. But I don't know. It's going to be a close one because the first fight, well, you know, um, Wild knocks Fury down twice and it was a draw. The second fight, well, mate, yeah, Fury just, <laughs> sorry, but Fury just finished him. The third fight, I don't know because I feel that this is legitimate beef where, you know, it's pride and so much is on the line, you know. So whoever wins gets a ticket to fight. The likes of AJ. 50-50 for me, man. 50-50. You know what? I've really, really thought about this for, I would say, months. And I was disappointed, like yourself, that the fight didn't happen earlier. And um, I just feel, for me, this might be even controversial, but I think Wilder's going to do it. I think he's going to be the the, the, the the champion again. I think that eraser 
right now he's going to learn to utilize it with uh, Malik Scott. Yes, a lot, a lot of people are going to argue that um, why is he going to have a trainer who obviously he knocked out in the first round during his sort of come up uh, to that championship. For me, I just feel that he's more hungrier. When a champion loses that title, there's that bit of energy that you are able to generate to try and get that back. And I just feel that Fury is going to be a little bit more complacent and feel that I'm going to walk over this guy again. And um, that's where I feel that Wilder's going to, you know, nail him to the ground this time. Yeah, I think the last time they fought was back, what, in 2020, right before the pandemic. And I think both of them haven't fought in, what, a year and a half. So it's kind of crazy yeah. how long they've both gotten to, uh, haven't fought in a while. But I would think that, or not Wilder, I think they would think, um, I would think Fury would have the advantage. And, of course, the last fight, he just dominated Wilder. But I don't know if I really have someone to put I really need to look at the fight more. And I feel like it's going to be, do you guys think it's going to be a knockout or do you think it's actually going to go the full 12 rounds? Nah, it has to be a knockout. It, okay. mate, it, it, it has to be a knockout. It has to be a knockout. If it goes for 12 rounds, it's going to be like, oh, it's going to be boring. Yeah. Nah, somebody has to get knocked out. Someone's getting knocked out. Someone's getting nailed to the ground because I think it's got past that point of personal. It's past that point now. It's personal to fight. You know, with the whole allegations about the second mm. fight, um, mm. you know, Fury doesn't, fully respects Wilder. There's just back and forth between these two. So I feel the only way to confirm that this guy is the best is uh, by a knockout. And I just feel that someone's getting knocked out. And uh, in my personal opinion, I'm going to put it out there. I think Wilder's going to be the two-time uh, WBC champion. Ooh. I like I said 50-50. <laughs> I'm sticking to 50-50. Well, before I was before kind of I would thought that Fury was going to win this fight. But now talking to you guys, it's really I don't know. I might predict Wilder. I mean, I'll probably I don't know, man. I just feel like that Fury. I, I have a I just have a feeling that what Fury is going to win this. But talking to you guys, I might actually have my my or my my opinion change because it seems like <laughs> you guys really think Wilder is going to do it. And, you know, that would not be surprising. I mean. I just think that it's this fight is going to be epic, but the fight after that between whoever wins this versus Anthony Joshua is also oh. going to be epic. Well, we, can finally, we can finally decide who the overall champion, the heavyweight division. That just I, it's crazy to see how many divisions in boxing there are, yeah. and it mm -hmm. just it's kind of crazy. I just think that that's another topic we can discuss in a later day, but that's another yeah. thing that kind of you know frustrates me with boxing. But mm -hmm. I think this is just going to be very. Very epic because I think the fight after that's going to be more anticipated between Joshua and whoever wins this fight. But, uh, you know, talking to you guys, I might have Wilder right now, Steve Hedge, now that you guys <laughs> have mentioned that you think he's going to end up winning. But do you guys have anything else you want to add to this uh, fight before we end the interview? Yeah, I just want to just put out there that, look, this is going to be a tremendous fight. Obviously, I'm not a promo or anything like that, but guys, <laughs> we're watching the fight tune in it's going to be fireworks I, I i see a knockout i see a knockout someone's getting nailed to the ground <laughs> all right so again again thanks for coming on guys again don't forget to check out the touching gloves podcast um also do you guys have anything in store for the future for your podcast before we officially end the interview sure. yeah um pretty much just um you know We've got episodes coming out every Sunday, 7 p.m. Um, no, it's actually 8 p.m. Uh, UK time. And uh, we've actually got a very, very, very special topic coming up. So we're going to obviously going to be promoting it um, in the socials. So uh, you can follow me at um, yours truly trade 29 and obviously follow uh, touch gloves uh, NAF. Okay. All right, again, thanks for coming on, guys. Again, don't forget to check out the Touching Glove podcast. You can find Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, what are you guys all on social media? Is it Instagram, uh, yes, Twitter? Right. Okay. Are you, got... you can find me on everything. So just type yours truly, Trey29. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, we're going to make things happen, especially with the Touch Gloves uh, boxing podcast. So just, guys, tune in. And um, I can't wait. It's going to be a tremendous journey for everyone here. Okay. Well, I'm on Instagram. I'll go by the name of BNG, B-I-Y-E-N-G-E. -E. Okay. Perfect. 
All right. Again, thanks for coming on guys. Uh, man, of course this interview will come out very soon, but again, thanks for coming on guys and, um, have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Take care. Take care.